Uh, launch retard we're not using for right now. ESD parameters, we're not gonna do anything with that right now. Um, not control isn't something we're gonna focus on at the moment, we, we will take a look at it. Timing versus coolant temp. Now this is where we wanna go and set up a timing compensation table based on where the engine's operating at in terms of the coolant temperature, the water temperature. In the table here, we see it goes from negative 40 up to 999. Let's re-optimize this. Let's say it goes up to 280 here. And we're gonna go between these points, let's highlight right here. So I'm just grab my values from negative 40, highlighted it to 280. I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna to go to fill row values. And that's gonna be re-indexing my coolant temperature range here to more reasonable values. Now, between negative 40 and probably 67, even 88 degrees, you might wanna add a little bit more timing in here. So I'm gonna go and add, let's say six degrees. Once I get up to about 109, I'm gonna go and di dissipate it away here. I'm gonna go here between uh, 67 to 109. I have that highlighted right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to fill row values. Once I go here and I come off of that range, that's where I'm starting to actually pick up some temperature out of the engine, I don't need to have any spark timing advance. Now the reason why I'm adding it in here is when the engine is cold, we have this wall wetting effect that takes place and as a result the atomization is poor of the fuel spraying into the engine and as a result the engine torque output is going to be lowered. So we make less torque when the engine is cold. We also have the factor of the engine oil creating more viscosity as it's on a, on a cold start like this, and it's going to actually drag the engine down a little bit, and it loses some torque as a result. So as the engine warms up, the atomization of the fuel spraying into the engine improves. We gain back some torque. The engine oil thins out. It also starts to have less drag on the engine. The engine torque picks up. So as a result, we can start to dissipate the spark timing away. We're trying to compensate for some of that lost torque by offsetting with more spark timing. More spark timing will help, help us go in and build a little bit more torque, Kind of even things out. Now the opposite is going to hold true here. When we take a look at a warm engine, we don't need any spark timing advance. If we have a value of zero in here, that means we're running off the spark timing we just programmed in the spark timing table. Well, if we start to overheat, that can get us into knock and pre-ignition conditions where we don't want to run the engine super hot. As a result, we can start to retard the timing so that knock or pre-ignition pre -ignition isn't going to be as much of a factor. I'm going to go here and I'm gonna say from 237, I'll start to take out some timing here. So I'm gonna say I'll take out two degrees. And once I get up to 280, I'll take out 10 degrees. This will globally take out the timing, idle, part throttle, and wide open throttle, so that the engine can run. I don't wanna run it overheating like that, but it could run that hot, and it could go in, um, and it has some way, some kind of a safety net or something in place so that it starts to retard the timing and the engine can't be ran as hard in terms of the cylinder pressure so that knock or pre-ignition doesn't necessarily play a factor. It still can happen, but it'll be offsetting that and trying to reduce that, that likelihood of knock or pre-ignition occurring. So let's right click here, let's go to fill row values. So we can see our dead band here, that's no timing offset, is we did 109 and roughly 216. That's gonna be where we're gonna run at and say we have no timing offset. Now our air temp is gonna be our compensation for air temperature. Colder air temperature, we don't wanna go and offset and add any more spark timing. Hot air temperature, if the air temperature gets too warm, we have the air density going down, and as a result, the engine is more likely to knock. We want to go and pull timing out as the air temperature gets super hot in the event that we get into some super, super hot day where the air temperature is, let's say, 120 degrees, 110 degrees. If we run the timing at just what we find in the table here without reducing the timing in the actual compensation, we'll find that the engine is more likely to knock, and we want to avoid that. So. What we need to do here is renormalize our axes down at the bottom. It goes from negative 40 to 99. We're gonna set this to 280 degrees. And then between here, we're gonna highlight the whole thing. Click and highlight and go to fill row values. We've normalized that. Now, if I'm gonna say here, get up to 152 degrees, that's where it's starting to get pretty hot. I'm gonna say I'm gonna to start to pull out maybe something like two degrees out of my, uh, my timing table. I'm gonna be idle part throttle, wide open throttle. If I go up here to 280 degrees, now it's probably never gonna get that hot on a naturally aspirated engine, but if I did, for somehow, some reason, I would go here and take out 10 degrees. And then between these points, I'm gonna do a horizontal interpolation. So between 152 and 280, it'll progressively take out more timing as the air temperature picks up. So we'll go here, right click, fill row values. All right, uh, inputs here, this is gonna be for the rev limiter one or the launch retard to activate it. They're not defined, we're not using those or doing it with them, so let's close that out. We go here to idle, this is the last ICF we have to worry about. We jump into idle speed. This sets the target idle speed of where we want the engine to run at. Now this is a cable driven throttle body with an idle control motor, the stepper motor from GM. So we're gonna have to go in and set most likely the throttle stop of where we want it to idle at mechanically so when the engine is warm, 
the airflow contribution is very low from the idle control motor. Now it's more of kind of a mechanically setting it, but we need to sync that ideal RPM point with the ECU so that when it's looking here in the idle control, it can ramp up the airflow from the stepper motor to bump up idle torque to be able to offset and keep it at or maintain the desired idle speed, like we say when we're cold starting or starting to run it up to the operating temperature. We want to make sure that we have a reasonable target RPM to start off the engine at. Now on a cam like this, I would idle it between probably 8 to 900. I'm going to go in the middle here and go to 850. I'm going to say from uh, 160 here and higher, I'm going to go 850 as my target RPM. Again, this is for the closed loop calculations and compensations for the idle control. We're setting this as the target so it knows where to adjust it up to. We're going to find on a cold engine, I'll say, let's say here from 60 degrees, even 80 degrees and colder, I'm going to say I'll idle at 1200. And then between these two, in between 80 and one, looking here, 160, we're going to go and start to have an interpolation and start to descend the target idle as the engine picks up temperature. Now, this is going to be kind of a two-part effect. One, we have a higher idle speed so the engine can warm up quicker. Two, we want a higher idle speed so that the wall wetting effect that would normally affect the engine helps, helps it overcome a little bit um, as the engine is idling a little bit higher offset or a little bit higher engine RPM, it'll run a little bit smoother. We really can't run an engine at something like 850 when it's warming up uh, because it will run probably a little bit rough and, and this is gonna help run a little bit smoother and get the engine to op up to operating temperature a bit quicker. So we can see here, colder temperatures, it runs at 1200 target and then it dissipates here at 850. That's about probably the sweet spot for this. Now, because this is automatic, we don't want to run it at something like 950 or 1000 unless we absolutely have to, unless it does not want to maintain its idle very well. Because if we're at coming into a stop and we're in gear, let's say we're just in drive, it'll try to pull through the brake really hard if the idle speed is too high. I want to be reasonable with this, so 8850 is going to be kind of, I think, at the sweet spot, and we'll try it. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.